So it's brew day number two on my system and this week I'm brewing the Southside Hoppers Smash Beer. So this is the local home brew club. Um, we're doing a smash beer, um, not a competition but a, um, a comparison. So we start all starting with the same grain bill and the same hop just to get a feel for the differences between the systems and the kind of differences that we may, may find. So we're starting with all Pilsner malt, New Zealand Pilsner. Um, I've gone for 5 kgs um, just to, to um, go with my efficiency from last week. Um, but there's three hop additions which is all US Cascade. So 45 grams at 60 minutes, 15 grams at 10 minutes and 30 grams at flame out. Um, there's also uh, a 7 day dry hop of 40 grams. So there's, a, there's been a bit of a, a hold up, I've opened up my brew pot and there was a bit of a phenolic, however you say it, smell in there, so I'm just recircling some hot water through there just to give the system a bit of a flush out before I start. So second issue of the day is I'm not getting much pressure through my pump, so the water's coming down here into the pump and up through the top and recircling into here. Yeah, we should be getting quite a good stream, almost like a shower head into here, but we're getting more of, a, more of a drop. And if you've seen my Homebrew Wednesday video, that's because I over-tightened this quick connect and I've, um, I've split one of the O-rings and I've spent the whole morning running around Dunedin trying to get a spare one. But um, it's quite difficult because it's a, they're all US fittings, so we don't seem to carry that on the shelf here in Dunedin. So it would seem that the pump, I've, I've put the, the faulty one on up here, um, but it would still seem that the pump's not getting enough pressure and whether it's because there's, I doubt it's because there's air coming in through there, but um, yeah, I'm not too sure, not too sure. So we'll see how we go anyway when I start mashing soon. So now I've got my bag in there, I've got my water in there as well after giving it a reset to clean out and I've put 32 and a half litres of water in there and the um, pump seems to be pumping alright so I'm just thinking it must need quite a bit of pressure behind it before it'll start going. So I'm in step one of the process uh, which is heating up to, it's set to 55 degrees when I'm going to cut it short at about 52 to 53 because last time I put my grain in and it only dropped by one degree and I had to actually wait for ages for it to get back to the right temperature. So pumps going, green light means elements on, that um, temperature, that's the temperature it's on, it's on 19 and that's the step, I'm actually going to have to fiddle with that because it usually tells me what uh, temperature it's shooting for there. But I do know it's going for 55 and I'm going to stop it short. Just hit 52 degrees, so I'm going to put it on hold and going to start the mash in now. So mashing is complete. I had a bit of a problem. I had the switch on boil. Um, so it's continued to ramp up, it got up to 58 degrees and it's supposed to be ramping down to 50 or not ramping down, it's supposed to, the temperature's supposed to come down to 50 for the next step but it's sitting at 58 but um, yeah, rightio, we'll, um, we'll carry on anyway and hope that nothing too serious happens So here we are on step 5 of the mash where we're ramping up to 66 degrees. So it took quite a while to get down to the 50 degrees and ironically when it finally got down to the 50 degrees it was time to move on to the next step. So it started heating straight away. So we're going to sit on this step for 45 minutes and we'll be back soon to have a look at it then. So 
on the mash out now and just about done so almost ready to pull the bag out and start the boil and can't forget to take a gravity reading something I've noticed is it's green is what it should be set to and red is what it actually is it often <laughs> it's gonna prove me wrong yeah there we go it often just shoots over slightly which is it's not a problem if it's set to 75 but if I'm sitting at 76 or any higher we're gonna to start to um, get too high and get some off flavors in the beer so I'll have to investigate the ceilings because there may be maybe a, way, a tolerance in there that I can change the mash out is complete and all I've got to do now is lift out the bag take a gravity reading and start the boil So just waiting on the boil to happen and I've got roughly, where are we, about 28 and a half litres of water and I was expecting just below 28 so I've got a bit more water so my efficiency is down slightly, I was banking on it being 68% uh, so that's around about 67% and I've got a pre-boil gravity of 1.037. I'm having a bit of trouble with Beersmith because um, this recipe when I imported it I had it in my my old system so um, it's telling me all bizarre things about what my efficiency should be and what I was expecting so um, yeah so I have to analyze this brew once I'm complete and see what happens. I upgraded Beersmith while I've been doing this today and when I printed this morning it looked like this this afternoon it looked like this so obviously there's some some changes happen. Anyway, I'll be back when the boil starts going to do a 60 minute boil and the first edition of hops is just after the hot break. So just approaching the hot break now one thing to notice with a pot like this 70 litre pot and just over 28 litres of liquid in there there's absolutely no chance of a boil over so don't have to run around and watch it like Grant Baker did with his spray bottle spraying it almost like a pervert peering over a wall it's like a smiley scary face in there yelling at me <laughs> the ghost of beer's past so first hop edition is going to go in there now, and that's 45 grams of US Cascade. So I'm um, doing something a little bit different. I normally use a hot bag, but I've decided I'm going to chuck them in there, and when I cool, I'm going to whirlpool. I normally do whirlpool, and I found in this pot last time it whirlpooled really well because it's nice and wide. So I'm going to whirlpool and see if I... Because I'm not sure... If I, I seem to think... I seem to have found that uh, using a hot bag you you don't get all of the, the aroma and the taste that you want to out of it. So we got to see if there's any difference this time without using a hot bag. So next hop edition is 10 minutes to go, but with 15 minutes to go I'm going to chuck the wort chiller in and some Irish moss, so you'll see that fairly soon. So I've got two 24 kilowatt elements in there and it gets a really good boil going. So I'm going to experiment with the... I've got a Rio stat on the side of the controller, so I'm just going to turn that down a little bit. Let's see what it does to the boil. So it's got a really high boil off rate, and the steam is quite incredible. And last week I actually brewed, and you can actually see there's um, beer been dripping down the walls because the was boiling that intensely. So turn that down a little bit. There's quite a bit of a buzz coming from there. But I'll keep an eye on that and see how it goes. Got the watchula in there. Um, as I've said on my Homebrew Wednesday videos, I need to get a new one because it's hardly even sitting in there. So I'll think about a counter flow in the future. Uh, second edition of hops ready to go in about 20 seconds 
And saying that I've got 25 litres of water, I know that the, when I put the chiller in there, it bumps the volume up by about a litre, so there's 24 in there. I was expecting quite a bit less than that, I think. I'll have a look later and give you an update. Time for hops in there. 15 grams of US Cascade again, plus there's some Irish moss in there. So I've got the final hop addition here, which is going in at flame out. And as I said, I've got the wort chiller in there. Now I've got the wife waiting outside. She's going to turn the chiller on just as I chuck this in. So I've got three seconds to go. And right, turn it on. And the hops are in. So we've got the water starting to come through. and the chilling has begun. So I'm going to put the spoon in there and stir it around just to make sure that I uh, I can call it quickly enough because I haven't got much surface contact in there. Um, once it's down to pitching temperature, I'm going to cover it up with some tin foil, like give it a big, uh, a big stir to whirlpool so all, the, all that disgusting hot matter goes to the bottom. And we'll get a nice clean beer and I'll cover it with tin foil as I haven't got my lid sanitised and I'll let it sit for about 15 minutes and then I'll bottle it. So next time you see me I'll be stirring this. So I've been calling for about three minutes and the temperature's dropped nicely um, <laughs> but I still had the, the element on so I was wondering why it hadn't dropped quicker so uh, it wasn't boiling so the, the chiller's actually doing a really good job even though even though it's hardly in the water it's managed to get it down to 75, 75 degrees in three minutes with the elements on. So I'm actually quite pleased with that. So I'm gently stirring it around now to get maximum contact on the chiller. It's not easy because there's um, all sorts of well, two elements down there and there's a uh, um, not a hop strain or a, uh, a uh, bazooka screen um, and an element, a, a um, temperature probe for the temperature gauge. Oops, there's a bit of splashing going on there, I'm trying to minimise that. It's very hard doing it one handed and recording. Now, the other thing that's interesting this week is the fan seems to have coped with an hour boil. There's a bit of steam on the wall. But everything else seems to be pretty good. So happy this week with the fan. I think the trick of turning the elements down helped a hell of a lot. So, whoa. So it's been... So after nine minutes we're down to 50 degrees. Three of those minutes the elements are still on though. So. Yeah, we learn, don't we? So 27 minutes to cool, which isn't too bad considering the problems I've had with getting the chiller in there and for having the chiller, the elements on for a few minutes. So I'm going to pull that out. And I'm going to try something that I haven't before. So I'm going to whirlpool it and then cover it for about 15 minutes, then come back and transfer to the fermenter. So I need two hands to whirlpool. So I'm going to turn this off and next thing you'll see is it going into the fermenter. So we've been sitting for 15 minutes so it's looking nice and clear. So I'm pleased I tried that, it seems to have worked. And what are we sitting at temperature wise? Oh, probably just a little bit hot, 24 degrees. Close enough though. Uh, star, all star sand ready, star sand ready to go, so just about to start transferring. It's looking pretty clear, that's the clearest I've ever seen one coming out of a brew in the bag, so I'm really pleased I did that. Um, I did get a bit of trub Trub, trub in the bottom, the first pump, but um, 
now I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to definitely do that again. So all transferred. Uh, whirlpooling obviously didn't do much because there's so much trub and hop stuff in there. But it's just on an even layer on the bottom. So nicely aerated with a good shake. And the yeast pitched. And there's some happy yeasties with a little bit of trub floating around in there. But that's alright because the yeasties will eat the trub. Give them some nutrients. I've pitched it at uh, roughly 23 degrees, so that's probably a little bit hot. But um, I'd already taken my chiller out and it's too late. So we've got it alongside the brew that I did last week. And this one's a nice rich red colour. So that shows it's th this will clear out from this cloudy murky mess and start to look good.